Genesis chapter 1. We're going to read the first verse. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Na verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It, it, was, it was okay before this. I don't know what happened. It's got an automatic key. Okay. Verse 2. The earth was without form. And void. And Darkness. Darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Light. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, for anything great, there has to be a beginning. Amen. I'll take my time. But I always have a challenge with Musakile Church because the, the grace to preach comes when I want to teach. So I, I don't know. I want to teach, but already I'm sensing within my spirit a steering. <laughs> In the beginning, God created. Now listen to me. When he created the earth, the Bible says it was without form. <laughs> it was void. And darkness was there. A place no one will want to associate with. A place you will not want to build a house. Dark. Void. No shop right. Nothing. Dark. Void. <laughs> Look at your neighbor just going. <laughs> That's In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But the earth, no, be Sunday. Was without form. Couldn't see any beauty. Couldn't see anything. That, that was worth it. it. It was a place you wouldn't think of, my brother. But God. Somebody say, but God. No I don't know your beginning. I don't know who you are. I don't know your home. I don't know the village you, you, you have come from. It may look dark. There may be witchcraft. There may be all kinds of negative things. You don't even want the surname you have. Because when they say, Conte, Conte, which is your surname, everyone associates it with crooks. Darkness. 
yes. no one wants to associate when they see you in town they go the other side they don't want to associate because of darkness that has followed in the beginning the good thing is when you see darkness it means it's just the beginning it's not, it's not your end. When you see pain, it means it's just the beginning. It's not your end. It is not who you are. It is not what heaven has created you to be. That is why when you are in the beginning and you see darkness, you see things are void. Things are not working out. Rejoice because God is about to create. He is about to shape. He is, he is about to declare. He is about to lift. Because where, where God is, darkness cannot stay. The devil has tried to keep you in one place. He has tried to shape you. He has tried to make a bad name for you. He has made you a person no one likes. You look at your age and you say, I am supposed to be married, but no one is looking at me because no everyone is saying, that one. In the beginning, there was darkness. Darkness does not follow you to your end. Darkness is there at the beginning. So that one day you, you can say, I once was broke, but now I am somebody. I once was poor, but now I am rich. I once had cancer, but now I have been healed. You need the darkness as a testimony. If you were, if you were despised, rejoice that the Lord is with you. If you have been rejected, rejoice that the Lord is with you. If people have called you names, rejoice that Jehovah has not left you. Jehovah has the final say over your life. I said Jehovah has the final say over your life. You will not die in darkness. You will come out because Jehovah has seen you and has said, let there be light. Job 28. Job 28. Hallelujah. Verse 3. Tell your neighbor, I thank God for the pain I've gone through. Job 28, verse 3. I don't know if you can read it. But I want you to read it with me. One, two, three. Man, Man puts, puts an, an end to darkness, to darkness and, and searches every recess for all in the darkness and the shadow of death. 
eh, 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 eh. God, when he created the heavens and the earth, the Bible says darkness was on the face of the deep. <laughs> While there's darkness, Job says, man, hey, hey, I thought it was God. I thought it was God. When the Bible says God said, let there be light. There was light. But do you know why? God had to say it. Because at that time, he had not yet created man. The Bible, the Bible does not say darkness disappeared. It just says, let there be light and there was light. God didn't say, darkness, go. No, 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 no. Why? He left it on the earth because he knew there was a man who will come and deal with that darkness. Hallelujah. I hope you are hearing me. You are saying, God come through. God is saying, I have created you. You are the one to put an end to darkness in your life, in your family, in your marriage, in your city, in your nation. Because man puts an end to darkness. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, <laughs> That is the reason why I like it that God has made me a black man. The white people look at us and they call us the dark continent. But they don't know what they are saying. Because before God created, he made sure there was darkness. Why? Because there will come a time when the darkness shall become light. Now, God doesn't have to chase darkness. God has called. Some of you guys are so quiet. Ah, my cameraman, follow me. Ah, ah. What's your name, um, uh, my, uh, my brother? Isaac Mutonga. Ah, God, God has called Lisa. Isaac Mutonga. Isaac when Mutonga. darkness comes on his life, Lisa. comes on his family, Lisa. when there's poverty, Lisa. Isaac Lisa. no longer has to call on God. Lisa. No. Lisa. All he needs Lisa. is the Spirit of God. Lisa. The Spirit of God Lisa. in him. Lisa. The Bible says, who scatter darkness. Lisa. Hallelujah. Amen. Stop playing religion. If it be your will, you can heal my brother. But nevertheless, not my will, but yours. Religious prayers. When Jesus was raising Lazarus from the dead, he didn't play, pray any religious prayer. All he said is, Father, I thank you. I thank you for this opportunity so that they may know that you are you are with me. He's, he looks, he tells them, remove the stone. And then he says, Lazarus, come out. Lazarus, come out. Why? Man puts an end to darkness.
You are counting on God. But God is counting on you. He knows as long as you are here, your family shall become millionaires. He knows as long as you are here, Usakile shall become a rich place. He knows as long as you are here, your, your people in the village, there shall be deliverance there. Hallelujah. It means if there was darkness before light, hear me. Oh, my, 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 my. Yeah, yeah, I'm well, yes, Help me. Help me here, Lord. It means if you are to move to your next level, it's a new beginning. And since it's a new beginning, there has to be a new darkness. Hallelujah. <laughs> it means there has to be a darkness that must be put as a sign of your next level. Some of you don't believe it. Hallelujah. Let me show you a scripture. I think, I think it's first, first, Chron first Corinthians chapter 2. I believe that's the one. Or second Corinthians chapter 2, one of the two. I'll, ch I'll check it out. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you hearing me, church? Are you hearing me? <laughs> verse 8. Okay. From verse 7. Chapter 2, verse 7. It says, but we, if we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. How can darkness become a mystery? How can when God created the heavens and the earth, the Bible says, and there was darkness, how? It's a mystery. What is the mystery? The hidden, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for whose glory? Whose glory? Uh -huh. It means there's a glory. Now, look at what happened. It says, which none of the rulers of this age knew. Can I tell you? Your parents don't know who, don't know who you are. Can I tell you? Your leaders don't know who you are. Your own husband doesn't know you. Your, your, your wife does not know you. God has hidden. There is a wisdom. What is that wisdom? The Bible says, for if they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. If Satan knew that by crucifying Jesus, he would have he would have destroyed himself. He would never have, have crucified Christ. Can I tell you, if the devil knew that by persecuting you, you would not, you would rise. He would never persecute you. That is why it is hidden. It's a secret in the realm of the spirit. What is the secret? The Lord allows your enemies to attack you. When the enemy attacks you, you begin to cry. Why? Why this problem? Let me tell you, it's a mystery. If you know who you are, that attack, that attack is a sign of a new level. It's a 
It's a sign. That is why. That is why. When the attack comes to you. Say praise the Lord. It's a sign. I'm going to my higher level. When your, when your landlord comes to you and says get out of the house say praise the Lord that is a sign that there is a better house hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. when that man he wants to marry says no Just don't cry it's a sign there is a better man that the Lord has prepared hallelujah Hallelujah. When you stay in a house in Usakile that has got holes in the roof and, and there is nice rain, rejoice when you have the automatic shower. It is a sign that you are about to go to your next level. I am here to declare over you. You are rising. You are moving to your next level. You are going to your next level. You will not stay in the same place. You are rising. God is lifting you. God is placing you on higher ground. If you believe it, say yes. Sometime in March, in March, I was not feeling well. And you know there were all these talks, Fiamma, Corona, COVID, and once a once a month to meditate by the COVID, one is for fiance by the COVID. But it's ever chakwale sad tamwaisha. Today I am provoking you to know the word of God. So I was not feeling well. And they came and took a test. And they said you are COVID positive. The first thing I did when, when, the, when the lab guy was doing all those tests. And he told me it's positive. I smiled and I said, thank God. That's what I told him. I said, thank God. Now, I've received my vaccination against COVID. He looked at me with wide eyes. Because he, he, he thought, he thought I'd say, yeah, I'm a male I know who I am. I put an end to darkness. No darkness shall get me. I chase it. Listen to me. Oh, you know what? When David was facing Goliath, what I liked was his stance. He was small, but he knew the spirit of God in him puts an end to darkness. Ah, when Goliath was there, he began to torment David. And then he said, this small boy, what do you think you can do? The Bible, if you read it, says, when David wanted to now go after Goliath, he ran towards Goliath. Listen to me. Don't run away from your problems. Run to them. And say, here I am, a child of God, washed by the blood, and I'm here to say, get out of my life, you demon of sickness, get out of my life, you demon of poverty, get out of my life, you spirit of failure, get out, I know who I am, I know in whom I have believed. Don't look 
at the world. Look at the God you serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Too many of us, our eyes are on our problems. The darkness is at the beginning. It's supposed to stay in the beginning. That is why the foundations are in darkness. is in where the foundation. They dig down before they go up. It's the same with our lives. Dig down, but don't keep looking down. There has to come a time when the darkness has to be buried. The foundation has to be buried. The stronger the building, the higher the building, the deeper the foundation. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why I believe I am speaking to the right people because some of you, you have been seeing darkness for too long. It has been deep. It has been painful. You have cried day and night. You have cried. You have said, where is God? I am here to announce Jehovah God has not left you. Because you have cried for so long, your foundations are deep. It means your building is a big building. If you have been in poverty for a long time, it takes long to do a good foundation. When you are doing a big building, sometimes it will take two, three months just on the foundation. Brothers and sisters, hear me well. If you have suffered for too long in poverty, it means there is a big mountain of wealth for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I thank God for what I have gone through. I thank God for the sicknesses I had when I was a child. I thank God for the days that I was rejected. I thank God when people called me names. I thank God for the days I used to stammer. I thank God for the days when things were not well because they shaped me to make me have a strong foundation. Today, I can say thank you, Jesus. I can say thank you, Lord. I have a strong foundation. May you have a strong foundation for your next level. May you have a strong foundation for your next level. If you believe it, say, I receive. Let me begin to wind up. I don't know who I came for. Back, back to Job 28. Listen. Verse 3. This is the attitude you must have. What does it say? Man. Everyone read it together. One, two, three. Man puts an end to darkness 
and searches every recess for all in the darkness and the shadow of death. Now, it does not say God. When man puts an end to darkness, that same place is the same place for that man to search for his riches. Same place. It says, he searches every recess for all, for gold, for silver, for copper, where in the darkness and where and the shadow of death. There's someone here. You, are, you were diagnosed HIV positive. And you have begun to have symptoms. And, he, and it has gotten you worried. The Lord has told me that you will not die a premature death. In fact, your days of greatness are about to manifest. Because in the shadow of death is where the all is. Listen to me. When you want gold, it's not in the skies. It's in the ground. When you want copper, it's not in the sky. It's in the ground. Even the fuel, even, even, even the paraffin, all this is oil. Do you know where it comes from? From the ground. In the place of darkness. In the place of darkness. If you can put an end to darkness, that same place becomes a blessing. Hallelujah. Now, now let me end with one scripture. Because I can tell you, if I continue, I will go for two more, three, three more hours. But I want to end. Second Chronicles, Chronicles chapter, 20. chapter 20. Let's see how this darkness is going to bring your wealth. How many of you are getting something new today? You are getting Let me tell you, from today, any painful situation, laugh at it. Hello? When the landlord says, Get out. Just go. <laughs> Hello. Look at you never and just go. Why am I kuseka? <laughs> Don't hide behind Why the mask. You are laughing, but you want to keep the mask on. Why am Look at this. Second Chronicles. Chapter Chronicles 20. Verse 1. Chapter 3. Uh, 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 verse 1. Chapter 3, uh -uh. 20. Yes. 20. Verse 1. Verse 1. Read it. Everyone. One, two, three. It happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them beside the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, it, nothing just happens. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, say, nothing just happens. What does it say? It happened. After this, the people of Moab, maybe, the, maybe Moab is poverty. Uh, the, the people of Ammon, uh, maybe Ammon is sickness. And the others besides them, Maybe it's failure. Maybe it's lack of money. 
Whatever it is, the Bible says it happened at the same time they came against the child of God called Jehoshaphat. You may be here and you are saying, Pastor, you don't know my situation. You don't know what I am going through. I have gone through it for too long. Oh, Pastor, no. It's too much. It's painful. You are, you are like Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat didn't know how to handle it. There comes a time when a child of God does not know what to do. Have you, have you been in a situation where you even cannot pray? I don't know about you, but I've been there. I, I know prayer works. But at that moment, I'm just overwhelmed. I just look, I say, well, yes, no one seems to understand why I'm going through this situation. It was darkness that was sent towards Jehoshaphat. I want to tell you something. On top of that, look at verse 2. People now came says, then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, a great multitude is coming against you. <sighs> what of them was painful things is, you are going through pain, and your friends are also telling you, you are going through pain. You have broken up. You've broken up in your relationship. And you are, you are carrying pain. And they come and tell you, yeah, you know those days when you were with him, yeah, I tell you things were good. I, they, are, they, are, they are putting the words I don't want to hear. You try to sleep. The memory keeps coming. What he did. Anyway, Lord, you say I have the mind of Christ. I receive the mind. Then you go and say, but don't know me. Meanwhile, you are supposed to be praying. But you know, you you somehow cannot connect. Going through you. They have chased me from school. How can they chase me from school? I think they have school fees. But where now? But where have you been? You are making noise. You are making noise. Why is that? Lift Jesus higher. But you are saying, I am not going to buy a lot of money. The voices are in the head. Jehoshaphat is receiving the voice. Now see what happens. The Bible says in, in verse 3. Verse 3. And Jehoshaphat. Fear. The whole aim of darkness is to bring fear. The whole aim of, of coronavirus is to bring fear. The whole aim of the HIV is to bring fear. He feared. There's nothing wrong. But don't keep fear. Don't let it control you. So what did he do? He set himself to seek the Lord. In other words, he knew 
If I can seek God, the Spirit of God will enter me and scatter this darkness. Brothers and sisters, when things are difficult, pray more. When things are not working out, pray more. When they say we shouldn't have overnight, we should have more overnight. We should pray more. Hallelujah. Amen. Why? We are the ones who put an end to darkness. Listen. My time is gone. But listen. Verse 14. Listen. Now, the Spirit of God comes down. The Bible says, then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jehu, the son of Matanai. Oh, hallelujah. In other words, the Spirit of God will not only come upon you, but will affect your generation. Listen. And listen what, what was said. Verse 15. And he said, listen all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you King Jehoshaphat. Listen all you of Wusakile and all you of Oasis of Love Wusakile and you Pastor Sam and your wife. Listen, thus said the Lord. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. Brothers and sisters, the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. Stand still and see the deliverance of the Lord. Somebody say yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Verse, uh, uh, verse 17. Says you will not need to fight this battle. Position yourselves. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. Hallelujah. Amen. Now to cut the long story short. When you look in verse 22, they began to sing praises. They began to worship. When things are hard, worship God. Praise his name. When things are not well, praise his name. Praise his name. But listen to me. Look at verse 25. And that's where I'm going to end. The Bible says, when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil, they, they found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies and precious jewelry which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And there were three days gathering the spoil because there was too much. Listen to me. In verse 1, it was the Moabites. It was the Ammonites. But, but you see, the more they were, the more they had money. Because each person who came to fight them, they had the money on them. Can I tell you, the more the enemy, the more the wealth. The more the problem, the more the victory. The Bible says that it was so much that when they began to collect, it's, it's not as if they had a break. There was no break, my sister. Day and night. Uh, Valencia, the gold. The silver. The silver. I am here to announce your time of harvest has come. Please stand to your feet. Stand to Again, I'm so happy that you could be that you've been watching this program, and uh, I want to say that God has been so good to us. He's given us the ability to go on air. 
but I want you to know that it does cost quite a bit for us to be on air and we need strategic partners people who can sow seed into into the ministry and it's going directly into the television production and programs so that you can enjoy this program so that you can uh, bring healing to others. Remember, when you sow seed into this ministry, you are not just uh, affecting uh, a few people, you are affecting many people across this globe. This program is going across different nations and uh, we want it to stay on, on air. So please sow a generous seed. The account numbers are there or you can go to our website. And I want to say this, that without Jesus, you know there is no life jesus is our life and if you are watching this program and you have never given your life to jesus this is the this is the best opportunity for you to give your life to jesus i want you to just say this prayer after me just say dear lord jesus yes just say just say dear lord jesus i come to you just as i am forgive me for my sins wash me in your blood i open my heart come into my heart Come into my life. I surrender to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, I want you to know that you are now a child of God. You need to find a good Bible-believing uh, church. Well, this has been Apostle Dr. Kautenga Piri saying, May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you in this season. As you go, go blessed in Jesus' name. Shalom, shalom.